Welcome back to part 11 of Fly Fishing Hatches. I'm Raj Kletke, and in this part we'll briefly discuss and tie flies for the little black caddis and the October caddis hatches. We'll also tie a very simple caddis pattern that has worked well for me and is worth having in your caddis fly box. A couple of years ago I was invited to fish the Bighorn River in Montana with some friends that had fished it multiple times before. They hoped we would be there during the famous Little Black Caddis Hatch and had recommended tying up some CDC Black Caddis in sizes 18 to 20. It's a simple fly to tie and had worked for them quite well on previous trips. Some recommend tying it with a small green butt to represent an egg case. So, put on a green butt if you desire, but then don't even bother adding dubbing for a body. Just wind the dark thread forward, Align two to four CDC feathers, depending on the size of the hook and the thickness of the CDC feathers, and then put a couple of thread wraps around the vertical CDC feathers about an eye's length back on the hook. Pull on the stems until the feathers are the right length, usually leaving the feathers just a little longer than the hook shank. Then put a few more tight wraps around the CDC, and then in front of the CDC, before whip finishing and cutting off the excess thread and CDC. You can see it's a very simple fly. You don't grease CDC, but you can use a dry desiccant. It floats flat on the surface film. The Bighorn's famous little black fly hatch is usually described as occurring in the late afternoon or evening when little black caddis in great numbers crawl down vegetation, rocks, and notoriously your waders, to lay eggs underwater and then float back to the surface as spent caddis, making great dry fly fishing with the CDC caddis. Well, unfortunately, we got to the bighorn a little too early for the little black caddis hatch, but I did get to fish these flies on a later trip on a different stream in the early fall for a much sparser, small, dark caddis. The fly worked very well. I didn't and still don't know what genus of caddis I was fishing. The fishing felt like a post-emergence hatch, like egg lane and spent caddis hatch, just like on the bighorn, but much sparser. I was fishing late in the evening, essentially in the dark, and I couldn't see my fly, so I fished it as close as possible to a dead drift while still, while still keeping a slightly snug line to feel the strike by using a quartering downstream cast. It was a little black caddis that I was fishing, but I don't know what genus or species it was. Trying to look it up later just caused confusion as the name, little black caddis, has been applied to numerous different species in multiple genera. The use of this name also varies from east to midwest to west. Additionally, I found some of the same species that were called little black caddis in one book referred to in other books by different common names and were often gray or brown rather than black. I have even found the bighorn famous little black caddis called different genera by different authors. So either there are multiple genera of a very similar little black caddis emerging in egg lane during the same season, or others are possibly confused off also. Nevertheless, the pattern of egg laying and spent caddis on the surface described just a few slides ago is consistent, and you don't really need to know what genus it is to fish it. Someday I may learn enough to identify some of the little black caddis to genus, but in the meantime, enjoy the little black caddis hatch with this CDC caddis. Tie up some of these simple flies and keep them in your late summer to fall fly box. Some late evening, you'll have little black caddis, genus still unknown, crawling on your waders and fish rising. You'll be ready. One of my favorite hatches last year was the October caddis, also known by other names that tell you the most important features. They mainly occur out west and are large orange caddis, sizes 8 to 12, that emerge in the fall. These are a substantial meal for the trout. Authors disagree on whether the pre-emergent and emergent hatch occur in the afternoon or at night, and whether the pupa is of any value to fish. 
Many believe the emergence is mainly at night and the pupa quickly swims to rock, to shore, etc., and leaves the water quickly. If this is true, the emergence period would generally not be a significant fishable event. I have too little experience to comment on this, but I have not seen an emergence of this caddis. However, the caddis adults live for multiple weeks, are surface egg layers, and an egg laying hatch is very much an excellent fishable event. So let's tie up an adult egg layer for this caddis. I've used several patterns for the adult October caddis, and all seem to work to some extent, but the one I liked best is an orange stimulator. It lends itself well to dead drifting or slight skittering movements in both slow or fast water. I use a 3x long hook, most commonly tie this in sizes 10 to 12. After putting on my thread base, I wind my thread forward to about 3 to 4 eye lengths behind the eye of the hook and stack a clump of hair, usually deer hair, for the tail. I measure and pre-cut the butts. I hold the clump firmly while I tie the hair starting at the front. I tie in tight but open spirals back, which allows the hollow hair to add to the flotation of the fly and also helps with a wider body. I tie in a brown hackle of proper size at the back of the fly, which is different than the classical method, which you can easily find online if you so desire, and I dub some spiky orange dubbing on my thread. I then hold up the hackle and wrap a few turns of dubbing behind the hackle. Then I put the hackle in the material clip while I wind the dubbing forward. I like my rotary vise for this to help control the dubbing as I wind, but of course a rotary vise is obviously not necessary. Once I get the dubbing to about three to four eye lengths behind the front of the hook, I tie it off and palmer the hackle forward in fairly tight spirals, similar to what you would do with a bushy elk hair caddis. Here I have the concave side forward, which I like in this fly, but convex forward is fine also. When you get to the end of the dubbing, tie off the hackle, and then cut off the excess. Stack and add a fairly heavy clump of deer hair, similar to a large elk hair caddis, but bind down the butts on the hair to give a reasonably smooth base. I'll commonly add a small amount of additional dubbing at the head to help bury the grizzly hackle stems, which I think does give a slightly more durable fly, but it's not absolutely necessary. Tie in and wrap a grizzly hackle quite densely. Tie it off, put on a small head, and whip finish. Note the hackle fiber lengths on this fly. Don't oversize them. Even with our generous working definition of a hatch, the October caddis egg laying may not seem like a hatch. Don't expect to see rising fish, as the adult laying eggs are usually few in number and quite sporadic. If in the correct season, usually mid-September through October, you see even a few of these large caddis flies flying by, be sure to try this fly. Trout remember this large fly well. I usually fish the stimulator dead drift or with minimal skittering in riffles and fast water where it is most commonly fished. I'm likely to use a little more skittering if it's in slow water. After all the fishing with midges and blue-winged olives that I usually do, it's really fun to be able to see a dry fly again. Incidentally, I've been told that this fly is also quite good for a hopper imitation or as a general searching fly. I've not used it for that yet, but I know it works great during an October caddis egg-laying hatch. Tie some up. 
Before we leave Caddis, I want to show you a very simple Caddis pattern that a fellow tire taught me at the Salbug convention. It has worked quite well for me during surface egg laying hatches and as a general searching fly. Cut a strip of 2 mm foam about as wide as the hook gap and taper the front slightly as shown. I use mainly tan and black foam and tie it on hook sizes 14 to 18. Don't bother to dub a body. Just be sure to form a thick thread base as foam has a tendency to roll around a bare hook. Tie the foam near the front of the hook. I usually start with the foam on the near side so as it partially rolls around the hook it ends up on top. Wrap thread tightly to compress any foam at the front of the hook and cut off the excess foam at the back just past the bend of the hook. Tie a brown or black hackle, depending on the caddis that you're representing, in place in front of the foam and wrap it two or three times around before tying it off and making a small head. Taper the back of the foam as shown and cut a slit up the foam. The length of the slit will determine how wide the foam spreads. I've used this simple fly during egg laying caddis hatches and searching. I don't know for sure if the trout are taking it as a caddis, a beetle, or some other food item, but they do take it. Only rarely have I had to switch to an elk hair caddis pattern to get fish, but then sometimes I've switched to this after starting with an elk hair caddis also. It's so simple to tie. You might as well tie some up and have them ready to try. You'll be glad you did. I believe the general principles in these three videos on caddis hatches are correct, but some of the specifics may be questionable. While I tried to concentrate on my own experiences with caddis hatches, clearly my experience is limited and anecdotal. I did supplement with some information from the literature, but even this is suspect, as different books do not always agree. In any case, I hope this information helps you get started on fishing these hatches and, most importantly, intelligently gaining your own experience. After all, that is the fun of fly fishing. While caddis hatches are quite frequent, practically all season, midge hatches are even more common. So join us next time when we start on midge hatches, something that too many fishermen ignore and by doing so, miss some of the best fishing of any trip. I'm Raj Kletke, and I'll see you soon.